what is up everybody Sean at E-Man here and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of Nerd Talk hope you guys are doing great and getting ready for the weekend and we are joined by another guest so just tell us a little bit about yourself and um, tell us your name Hi everyone, my name is Maria. I am a cosplayer. I've been doing it since 2013. Um, and I've been modeling since then as well. So, yeah. Did you start, wait, so did, did which one came first, the cosplay or the modeling? Um, the modeling came first just a few years before, like maybe two to three years before the cosplay. Okay. Yeah. So Oh, so tell us about, so to get things started, tell us about your, uh, your modeling. So the modeling, um, I started, um, back in 2013. Um, I started here in Dallas and then I did it for about two years and then I jumped into cosplay. Um, my first cosplay was Sailor Moon. I was obsessed with it growing up. Okay. And um, yeah, I, I went to my first convention in 2013 here in Dallas. And then I moved to LA. Oh. Um, yeah. And that was kind of nice. And then um, modeling kind of like um, took a step forward and I was doing that more. Um, cosplay kind of took a step back and I didn't jump back into it uh, till 2019 when I um, I started saving a little bit of money and I was like, what do I want? I want like a really nice present. And um, I ended up buying like this really nice Wonder Woman outfit um, that's like, you know, like the leather top, the leather skirt, it comes with the sword, the shield, um, all the accessories. So I was like, wow, this is really nice. And I was, and then that's when I started going back into conventions in 2019. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Wonder Woman, so you the first one you've done was Sailor Moon. Yeah, in 2013. And then I took a little break. That's when I moved to, I moved to LA and then, you know, life kind of happened. Yeah. And um, I just got busy and I started breaking into more modeling and um, and trying to do more acting in LA. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, and then I just kind of like forgot about um, cosplay for a little bit, but I was still watching anime. I've always been a fan. So I, I kind of stayed on top of them, uh, like what's, you know, like the new shows and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. What uh, what's, your, what's your favorite anime show? I like the old ones. I know my favorite is Kill the Kill from like 2013, oh. I believe. I, I'm obsessed with it. And um, I barely remember that. But I, that name sounds that name does sound familiar. It's it's kind of old. And I, I just like it because it's like. It's very like fan service. There's a lot of fan service in it, but it's also like very bloody with like a an amazing story and well developed characters, and the villains are just so awesome. Like uh, they have like zero um, redeeming qualities, and they're very they're they're just very well written characters. And I I think we don't get a lot of villains that have zero redeeming qualities. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. So I like that. Because they're meant to be hated. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because I was I had somebody on the other week. It might have been last week's episode, but I was talking to them about uh some of the anime that I watched growing up, like uh Inu Yasha. Um, yeah, was good. Sailor Moon. I believe that was on TV when I was growing up. If it if yeah. it wasn't on TV, uh my cousin had like two of the VHS movies that came out. Uh -huh. um, and so that's how I came across Sailor Moon. Um, and see, there's also, I watched a little bit of Cowboy Bebop, but not like a whole thing of it. And then uh, I was telling somebody the other day that I just finished watching uh, is it Yu Yu Hakusho. Why does that sound familiar? It's like, it's an old, It's a, it came out, I believe, either around the same time or a little bit after Inuyasha. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be on like Adult Swim when Adult Swim would premiere, you know, yeah. anime and things like that. Um, it was a really good show. I, mean, I remember seeing it on TV, but I just didn't think much about it because I wasn't really into anime growing up. 
Um, but years later, I was on Hulu and I saw they had the entire series on there. So I binge watched it all and I loved it. Loved every, every bit of that. Yeah, that's normally how it is. Did you ever, did you ever get into Toonami? Yes, that's where I watched a, a majority of the anime was yeah. because pro Inuyasha was primarily on Toonami. Yeah. Um, they also had. Uh, did you ever watch Dragon Ball Z? Yes. Uh, yeah, I grew up with Dragon Ball Z. I did too. And then it's Dragon Ball Z. They had, I think, I, I think Gundam was on Toonami. Mm. Or maybe if it was, it was on the earlier years of Toonami, but then it got pushed aside or, out the, or it's for something else. Um, see, there was Big O that yeah. I remember. Yeah. Oh, there was, a, there was some other ones, too. There were, like, there were like some really old school classic yeah. animes well, that are, I watched. Those are like the best. Remember when that I like the old school like uh, drawing, you know, like like. Uh, oh, yeah and stuff like that like now everything's like computerized and it's beautiful like aesthetically but um i don't know it's just something about like the old style gives me like nostalgia yeah you know? yeah. yeah definitely oh uh, and it was like and the way toonami was like had its show spread out i think it was like start at nine or ten and go all the way up until three or four o'clock in the morning with with shows and so the really good shows you kind of had to like stay up and watch if you were really wanted to see those. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Those were the the good shows that were like super bloody and stuff like that. That just got like that's why they waited until nighttime. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, a little bit was worth it though, because uh, because I did, so for a while, I because any Yasha, for instance, I would definitely like because <laughs> it was one of those things where like you would fall asleep and then any Yasha's theme song would come on. You'd yeah, wake up. Kind of, yeah, you would just wake up. That, that, that happened a lot. Um, I can't remember what season I got to before I kind of like either they stopped showing it or I kind of just got busy with other things. I never got around to watching it, but it's on Hulu. So I was able to like start to finish or watch all of it. And so I was pretty, pretty happy to finish it. How many seasons did I make of Inuyasha? Like, they have, four? I think, six. Oh, dang. Yeah, it was like six seasons. It was like, because I think they got up to like season five in the United States, but they had a season six in Japan. And so that season six didn't air here. And so you can only, uh, it's on, it's on uh, Hulu. I forgot what it's called. Um, but they didn't, they never dubbed it? No, they never dubbed it. Mm. Yeah, that, that entire last season of it is completely, um, uh, in Japanese, and so, which is fine. I mean, I don't complain as much. I don't mind um, watching if it's if it's like that. But it, it was a lot better if it's like dubbed. So, it, yeah, well, it just makes it easier to sit through. I feel yeah. like they, like the hardcore fans for sure watched uh, for yeah. sure watched the 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 non dubbed one because they were like, if you're that invested, you might as well. Right, because then yeah. it came out um, probably. Two, three years ago, they came out with like a, I don't know if you know it, but they came out with like a sequel to Inuyasha huh. where it follows their daughter and oh, no Shoshomaru's daughters. Hmm. And so it's, 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 it was, it's called uh, uh, the Yashimi Half Dragon Princesses or something like that. Half Demon huh. Princesses or something, yeah, something like that. But it's, it's pretty good. It's, um, it's not bad at all. Really? Um, I don't think I ever saw that. Yeah, it's, yeah, I do. I do really like it. Um, Naruto, I do like Naruto. Uh, I never got into that. Really? I yeah, I never got into Naruto or uh, One Piece. I got, I got into One Piece early on, but oh, yeah. it, well, it's just did. kind of like the more it goes on, it's just like I don't know if I really want to like that. Give, I mean, I give credit to hardcore fans, but like, I don't know if I want to like watch because it's been on for years now. So does so, Dragon Ball Z? Are you still do you still follow Dragon Ball Z or not really? Uh, I've every now and then, um, I've watched all of Dragon Ball Z now. Well, not the point where I kind of like fell out with Dragon Ball Z was, um, I believe it was Dragon Ball GT. 
Oh yeah, I fell off way before then. Oh okay. Oh yeah. That I was that was when I completely fell off of it. And I, I have watched some of the movies. They had one come out a few years ago that's kind of like a revamp. It's like the Dragon Ball Z Super. Uh-huh. Um, they had a movie come out a while back with kind of like a new movie involving Bro- Broly. Um, Dragon Ball Z Super Broly or something like that. So that was, that was actually pretty good. But I I prefer, like you, I prefer kind of the old school style of anime because yeah. I mean I grew up with Dragon Ball Z but I also grew up with Dragon Ball mm. and so that was pretty good and, uh, and pretty fun to go through as a kid what, um, what was your favorite um, my favorite saga was uh, the Android Saga oh yeah. is that Android Saga involving Cell or is this yeah the Cell yeah yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah like from that well I liked it when like uh, Android seventeen and eighteen showed up. Oh, all okay. The until all the way until Cell died. Yeah, that was yeah. yeah. That was, like, my it's favorite. A, yeah, that was yeah. I did enjoy uh, that saga. I enjoyed the Frieza saga was pretty good. Yeah, uh, yeah because exactly. that's the first time you know you see Goku turn Super Saiyan. Mm-hmm. And uh, let me see, Majin Buu saga. Ah. I th- I remember watching it, but I it's just I don't remember much of it since it's been years. But I mean, Cell and Freeze are the main two that you obviously would remember. I guess yeah. Mar- I guess Margin Boo is also rememberable too. But those are the main two that I remember uh, growing up is those two characters. It got really weird with the Margin Boo, like you know, like he just kept changing forms and forms, and I just like I was like I can't keep up with it. Right. Yeah. yeah, and so, but I mean, it was it was pretty, it was still pretty de- uh, decent, and I know they kind of like remastered it because it was like Dragon Ball Z, then Dragon Ball Z Kai, and um, I don't think they did it a third time. I know there's mm-hmm. Dragon Ball Z Super, and they introduced like all this crazy stuff. Like now they got like Super Saiyan God mode, and uh, oh yeah. Nice. Yes, yes. It's, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. And but I mean, uh, people who followed it for years, they're like, this probably doesn't bother them as much. But I'm just kind of like, yeah. oh, I mean, I don't know if I would really get into it at this point now. Yeah, I know. I feel like, yeah, like I told you, I fell off after I I think I so I watched like the beginning of like um the Majin Buu saga, but then I was like, I just fell off. Yeah. I think I just had stuff going on in life. I was just like, okay, time to focus on like a whole life. <laughs> Um, and so, but yeah, definitely, yeah. Growing up with anime, that was um, that was pretty fun. There was like, there was also like Blue Lagoon. I remember that. I remember that. Oh, uh, it's pretty, pretty good show. Um, there was one called Witchblade that was interesting. I don't think I saw that either. So there, it was like weird because because I had Direct TV growing up, and so there were times when I would come home from school. And there's like these different styles of anime. I guess it, I guess to say the animes that were coming on on all these different channels were very much more adultish because a lot of the times the characters were like half dressed and things like that. Those are the like, best, though. Well, yeah, you're right. They're definitely the best. And so um, I just like, I mean, coming home from high school and like turning on anime and seeing all that, I was just like, oh, what is all? What is all this here? And so. Yeah. I mean, if you were like a, if you were like, you know, invincible or like Superman, I'd dress slutty too. You don't need armor. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, true. I'm like, I just wear like a thong and pasty. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting um, shows and like that. But uh, let's see what else was there. I do like Attack on Titan, although I haven't watched a lot of it. Uh, I haven't watched it. I like the concept, but I never right. got into it either. So, uh, I think they're like on the final season, but it's like stretched out over three parts. And so, huh. I just I kind of like when they stopped doing the Toonami, it's kind of, I guess, is when I started to like fall out of it because mm. they were like, instead of like showing an anime and stuff like that, it would have like Family Guy or, you know, Futurama, which, which those are good shows, but. Yeah, but I feel like they're just repeat, like copies of each other. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. I know, like American Dad, The Cleveland Show, and Family Guy. Exactly the same. Yeah, 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 pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, I don't Future like was good. I was probably about seven when Futurama first came out. Really? Yeah, and I grew up. I kind of grew up with it. Um, but it's not. It's not pretty bad. It's not too bad. I know they. I know they came out and they said they're doing like a, a new season of it. So that should what, be interesting. Futurama? Yeah. Hmm. That uh, let's see. Futurama, King of the Hill is getting a new season. I don't know if oh, you. Dang, that's been on for years. Oh yeah, I I love King of the Hill. Really? They, yes, it's so Weird. great. Um, they like on FX on Direct TV. They they just constantly replay episodes every day, and so every time I, cause I come home from lunch and I get like an hour lunch break, uh, so I come home from lunch, turn on TV, and it's, I'm either watching. South Park because they have that on all the time, and uh, King of the Hill or Seinfeld. So, hmm. I remember as a kid. Remember, what, I don't remember. I think I'd be watching something, and then like the Mash logo would come on. Okay, and I'd be like, okay it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's how you know it was getting late. Yeah, Ma- Mash. That was a TV show, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I a lot of people liked it. I I never watched it, and so I, was I never really watched it either. Like I just well, I just know the intro, like the beginning of the intro with the helicopter in the in the mountains, and I was like, yeah. all right, time to go to bed. I don't even know any of the characters. I don't know what it's about. Nothing. Yeah. So I was just I was the same as you. I was kind of like, all right, this is my this is my time to to move out of this. So kind of kind of done with that. <laughs> so, um. So shift gears a little bit. So mm-hmm. you you do your tell. So you you just went to an you kind of went to like an expo thing, didn't you? I did. I went to um. It was called Waifu Expo. It was their first year. It was an eighteen and up convention. It was fucking awesome. Like so much. You fun. you look like you were having a lot of fun. I would see all your Instagram stories. I was like, she's having a lot of fun. I had the best time. I was also like in a funk. So I needed to like, like I needed like a girl's weekend Mm -hmm. and, and me and two other girls, we like, we shared a a hotel. I had the best time. I was like, it's about time uh, that they have like a 18 and up DFW, like a 18 and up convention in the Mm -hmm. DFW area. Cause the only one that's uh, the other, the only other one that's in Texas is called Edgy Expo, but it's in Austin, and um, they've been doing that for like many years. And I heard it gets like really, really lit, but um, it's five. It's a five hour drive for me, so I'm like, oh, eh. I got you. yeah. I was like, that's a little bit too much of a commitment. But this one, this one was in downtown Dallas, and for it being their first year, they got a great turnout. Like okay. I think. It's, I think they sold out um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oh, so it was just a three-day weekend kind of thing? Yeah, but I was like, wow, they sold out for their first year. That's that's pretty fucking awesome. Tell us a little bit. So what all did you do? So let's see. So we see um, we got there. We got there Friday. And um, the artist alley was from four to seven. But uh, by the time we got checked in and did our makeup and our hair and got dressed, we finally came down to the convention like around 650. Okay. So so they didn't let us into the artist alley but because it, it was already closing. So I was like, oh, great. It's going to be like a boring, lame Friday. So we just kind of stood out there and like in, in like the um, they had like a whole area blocked off because it was in a hotel. And um, obviously, it was, everyone was like half naked, you know, because it's 18 and up. Wow. Ass, these are, were out. <laughs> and um, so they had the whole area blocked off, which was nice because, you know, you don't get to bother like the hotel guests, you know. Um, and I think they had other conventions going on, too. Like upstairs, I think they had like a bar mitzvah going on, which was okay. kind of odd. Uh, like, a, you know, like those crowds don't really mix. Right, right. Um, and then they have like a Ford convention and uh, some like career building convention the whole weekend we were there. So it was just kind of odd. Like the crowds were kind of like different, you know? Right. But um, 
but no, they had a great turnout. It was nice. Uh, we just kind of hung out in like the blocked off area that they had blocked off. And uh, we like networked, we met a bunch of people. Um, I think Friday I had like, I want to say I had like three or four photo shoots mm. just just on Friday from, I don't know, was it, was it four to 10? Okay. Four to 10 p.m. Um, four different photo shoots and we were just meeting people, taking pictures or we catching up with people. Um, I don't know. It was a great time. So that was Friday. And then after Friday night, we went to, they had an after party, like a, like a rave. Mm -hmm. And that was fun. I had never been to one just because normally like I'm exhausted after the con and like, you know, you just go home. But since we were, since we had a hotel there, I think we left like around eight and we, we, we chilled out from eight to 11. And then at 11, the, the rave was from like 11 to like two in the morning or something like that. So that was fun. Mm. And, uh, it's, a yeah, wild, fun. it's a wild time. Yeah, it was. And that was only Friday. Saturday was like the lit day because that's when everybody was there, you know, like right. it was so packed. And uh, so, yeah, Saturday, we kind of did the same thing. Just I had a photo. I had a couple of photo shoots, networked, met some people, uh, worked with some new photographers and. Um, and then we went to the rave that night as well. And I think we stayed up till like four in the morning. Oh, wow. Yeah, we were just like dancing and like getting buck wild in the in the hallways of the hotel. <laughs> so how does that so how does that so you say you're, you mentioned that you were with some new photographers. How does that work? How do you get how does that get set up? So normally, <laughs> like I do is like so like at regular comic book conventions, I normally, you know, you put on your best cosplay and you just kind of show up. And I guess um, the photographers that go there are also there to like network and meet models and okay. take pictures. You know what I mean? Right. So if, if they like your costume or they think it's cool, um, they'll ask you. They always pull me to the side and they're like, hey, especially like in my like in my Wonder Woman outfit, every time yeah. I wear it, it's like. Um, I think it's because it's my most recognizable one, you know? Right. Um, so every time I wear it, um, different photographers will ask me, hey, you know, do you have a minute? Can, we, can I take a couple of photos with you, of you? And then after the photo shoot, I make it a habit to ask them for like their social media, you know, so like so like so we can like do like a cross collaboration. They give me photos and then I upload them to my Instagram and tag them, obviously. Mm -hmm. And that can we both get like exposure in, in like a way, you know? Right, right. Okay. So, but sometimes you get so busy that you like, you forget, or sometimes you're just tired, you've had a long day, you're hungry. Um, sometimes you kind of forget to to ask the photographers for their for their social media pages, you know? Mm -hmm. sometimes. Oh, I see. Yeah, sometimes. But um, uh, I just moved back from L.A., um, a year ago, it's going to be a year in April since I moved back to Dallas. Um, so I've been kind of like, I knew, mo I think I knew like, I knew like three or four of the photographers already. You know what I mean? Like they okay. told me they were, yeah, they told me they were going to go there to the, to the convention and we like made plans, like, you know, block out a time to like have a photo shoot with them and stuff like that. What, so were these photographers? So these photographers you knew before you left for LA? No, 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 no. I left. I left from. I left to LA in 2013. Oh, okay. And I, I, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, the timeline's kind of confusing. So I left to LA in 2013, and then I was there for eight years, and then I came back last April. So 2022, April. 20, I I think I moved into my apartment uh, April Fool's Day, like yeah. April April first. 2022 okay and now it's gonna be a year but like last year when i moved back i went to a bunch of conventions and i started like uh networking with uh photographers in the dfw area okay yeah. i've been to i've been to dallas uh once it was about 2018 i think is uh -huh. when i was there i i had a friend of mine who was there interning for a, a, a corporation and so i went down there for 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 my vacation but also hang out with them too and uh oh it's wild dallas is pretty wild wait where are you 
Where are you based out of? So I'm based out of Alabama. Oh, okay. Oh, Yeah. you're just like, what, like a few states away? Yeah, it's like a 10 hour drive from Okay. where I live to Dallas, which wasn't bad. Um, and so I went to go and, and hang out with them, which was pretty fun because we went to uh, Medieval Times. That's there. Yeah, medieval That was times. pretty fun. I had never been before. Really? Um, What do you think? oh, I, I oh, I enjoyed it. It's very, very cool. Um, Like the night that I was with, that I picked, didn't win, but it's okay. I I won't be. I wasn't too petty about it. So, um, what else did we? Um, there's. I can't remember the name of the theater, but I went. We went to a movie theater, and it's my first time going to the to that one, to the kind that uh brings you food. Oh yeah, they're fancy. And so that I was like, this is this is amazing. This is Yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's like a different experience, Um, yes, right? oh, yes. They had, um, oh, what is it called? It's this place in Dallas. It's called Coach, Koch. And it's like, uh, it was like breakfast biscuits with fillings in it. Ooh. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. It was really good, though. Like, I would get like kind of this roll, and you can get it, you can get sausage and biscuit, like a sausage and gravy in it, uh, bacon, egg, and cheese in it. And so it was, it was very good. I have to, I got to remember the name because it was really good food. Um, Sounds good. what else did we, and then while, while, while they were working, I, I traveled around a little bit. I went to uh, Waco to see Baylor University and I was going to go to College Station and Austin, but I just didn't have enough time to get around to that. But, but it was very cool though. I really enjoyed my time other than the very, The, the, the driving and there's always seemed to be like a toll road and everywhere you go. Yeah. yeah it's kind of annoying So it's just really, I was like, okay, this, I'm kind of done with this, but it was very fun. I did. I did enjoy myself in Dallas. yeah it's a it's a cute little town it's Oh yeah. uh it's changed a lot since i um since i lived here like a lot of the parts that used to be like really like you know not safe and ugly have turned they've invested a lot more money into them Oh, uh, okay, that's so good. they've, they've just gone like a lot of businesses have moved in and like bars and clubs and stuff like that and restaurants so they've kind of like revamped up the place you know a little bit Okay, that's yeah good. That's yeah good. Um, so besides being a model and cosplayer, you also have an OnlyFans. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that. Did that start around the same time as the modeling, or how did that come about? So that started in 2019, summer Okay. of 20, yeah, it was like summer of 2019. Um, before, before that started, um, let's just, I'll like, let's back up a little bit. I, um, I was in real estate for four and a half years. Oh, really? Yeah. Out in LA. Okay. And I mean, it was really good money, but it was just so much work and I, it was raining and I was exhausted And I was kind of burnt out at the time. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take about like, um, I'm going to take like a, you know, like a six month break. I was like, I'll take a break summer and then come back, you know, in January. And then, so that happened. And then the, the pen, and then, um, so the night that I started OnlyFans, I went to a, um, uh, let's make a deal show. Okay. Yeah, I was on it with some friends. We were like in the background. Um, and then I left. The girl behind me won like $20,000, by the way. Oh. Um, yeah, I was like, what? Um, so that night I was I was heading to the grocery store and I was like, okay, um, what am I going to do in these six months? You know, like I can't just do nothing while like, because I'm, I'm like, I was in real estate for so long. I was like, got to do something. Go, go, Right. go, go, go. So I was like, okay, what should I do? What should I do? And I I had already like kind of been investigating what OnlyFans was. And I was like, okay, doing my research. And I was like, should I do an OnlyFans? Like everybody, like um, all of my Instagram followers kept telling me that I should do it. So I was like, okay, well, let me do my research first. Um, anyway, so like I was on my way to the grocery store and I rear-ended some guy because I was like not paying attention. But it wasn't bad. It was Uh, like, okay. literally, like I gave him like a little love tap, but he had like a brand new truck. So, Oh, okay. 
So he, he had just got the truck and I totally get it. Like, you know, like you just got your new car. Um, I left a dent, like I left a scratch in it. Anyways, um, we switched insurances and stuff like that. And like, um, I ended up having to like pay 300 to fix his bumper or whatever. So I took that as a sign to start an OnlyFans. Okay. So I was like, all right, let's do it. So later that night I signed up and I started doing it. And for the next six months, um, from Jan, no, from this, from August to December, I killed it. I was like, well, I was making, I was making really good money. And I was like, wow, this is great. Like I can just, you know, work from home and like take pictures and stuff like that. And I don't have to go anywhere. No gas, no LA traffic. Mm -hmm. This is great. Um, <laughs> and then the whole pandemic happened in January of 2020. Or like around that time, right? No, it was like the end. Uh, yeah, no, that was about, it was about. No, 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 no. It was it was like the start of 2020, January 2020 is when it. Yeah. Well, it or was like more December. like it was more like March of 2020 when it really kicked off, but it it, it started in like early January, February. Yeah, that's when it started being on the news and everybody started getting scared and stuff. Yeah. So, um. So yeah, it just it just kind of worked out that way. I was like, okay, so I can't I can't really go back to real estate right now because you know, like it's hard to meet people. People are right. being a little bit more cautious about meeting up and open houses. So I was like, all right, well, it's meant to be, I guess. I guess I'm just gonna do OnlyFans, and I've been doing it ever since. Okay. Yeah, hmm. and I love it. Like it's 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 very time consuming because you're yes. you're it's. Like there's a lot of pros and cons about it. Like main, like um, pros, I would say, you know, you make your own money, you're your own boss, you make your own hours, you work whenever you want, which are all great things. But if you're like a shitty manager or boss, you're like, I go through like ins and outs. Like sometimes my time management isn't very well, like it mm. could be better. So... Sometimes it's a hit and miss, but like if you stay on if you stay on top of it and you're you're working every single day, it gets exhausting having to like pump out content every single day, you know? Oh, I bet. And always, yeah, it's like sometimes I just don't want to be sexy. I was like, I just want to be like in a hoodie and like watch <laughs> yeah. Netflix and like binge like potato chips. <laughs> no, I get that. I get that. But um, I like it, you know, it's better than it beats working a nine to five for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's something. Uh, I don't think it was anything else. Um, but yeah, you're. I mean, it's very popular because like you post some of your stuff on your Instagram. Well, not well, not your OnlyFans stuff, but some of your modeling pics you you post on your Instagram. They're they're really good. Um, yeah. So if you guys are watching, be sure to go check her out because her stuff is really good. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's uh, that's actually might be it. That's a, I think that's a good place to wrap up for this episode. Um, as per usual, you guys, uh, it should be up on screen now. But there's all the ways that you can follow and support her. Definitely do that. Uh, like I said, she does great work. She puts in a lot of time. You won't be disappointed. Um, and it was very fun to have her on. But for those who are listening on podcast, uh, tell us one more time how people can follow and support you. Okay, so my new Instagram is cuddle.and.kiss. And my OnlyFans, uh, my username is uh, Maria underscore Milan. And I can spell it out for you. It's uh, M-I-R-E-Y-A underscore M-I-L-A-N. Yeah. Uh other than that, you guys, you guys enjoy your weekend. Thank you for listening and or watching this week's episode of Nerd Talk with Shawnee D-Man. Appreciate it. You guys have a, like I said, a great weekend. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya. Bye.